The BME 688 is the first gas sensor with artificial intelligence and integrated high-accuracy pressure, humidity and temperature sensors. It can detect volatile organic compounds, sulfur compounds and other gases such as carbon monoxide or hydrogen. Basically, the BME 688 allows us to capture a unique fingerprint of the surrounding air. The recorded data will then be the basis for the machine learning later on, where we use it to train the sensor, so it learns to distinguish these unique fingerprints. But for now, let's focus on the recording. We're going to use the development kit board from Bosch SensorTech. It comes with eight gas sensors, which we can use simultaneously in our recording. The board records data standalone, meaning we don't need our computer with BME AI Studio during the recording. I have already configured the board for our recording session in the previous step, so we're good to go. If you haven't done this, please check our video on board configuration. Also, if you have a brand new board that has never been used before, please let it run for at least 24 hours to stabilize the sensors before you start recording real data. This procedure is necessary only once and your board is then ready to take reliable measurements. For this video, I want to use the BME 688 to detect coffee beans. Or in other words, I want to use the BME 688 to distinguish the gas composition of coffee from the gas composition of neutral air. So in order to train an algorithm for that, we need to record gas data for these two situations. When there is coffee, and when there is no coffee, which is basically neutral air. Let's record neutral air first. It's simple. We're just going to record the gas composition of the room. Make sure you have the SD card with the right configuration file inserted. And connect the BME board to power with a micro USB cable. Once the board is powered on, it will automatically start recording gas data. We can just place the board on our table. Be careful not to touch the sensors with your fingers. Fat on your skin will stick to the surface of the sensor enclosure and influence your recordings. If everything is OK and the board is recording data, the red LED will be flashing every two seconds. We want to capture a good amount of data, so let's leave the board recording for about 20 to 30 minutes. Now let's move on to the coffee. This is where it gets a bit more interesting. We always want to make sure that we record data in a realistic way, depending on our specific use case and goal. That means we might need to record data in various situations and even across multiple days. The more we vary the data, the more robust the algorithm will be later on. For instance, temperature and humidity can have an influence on the sensitivity and selectivity of the sensor. For our first recording of coffee beans, I brought two different types of coffee to vary the data a bit, espresso and filter coffee. Let's measure the espresso coffee first. Place the espresso coffee in a relatively airtight container. Press button 1 on the board to mark this moment in the data. It's the top of the two buttons labelled S1. Place the board in the container with the coffee and let it record the gas composition for 20 to 30 minutes. After that, let's measure some more neutral air. Take the board out of the container and put the container far away so it doesn't interfere with the next recording. This time, press button 2 on the board to set another marker in the data. It's the bottom of the two buttons labelled S2. Place the board on the table again and let it record for another 30 minutes. Finally, let's record the filter coffee. Same procedure as with the espresso coffee. Place the filter coffee in a second container, press number 1 on the board and place it in the container along with the coffee. Again, let the board record the gas composition for 30 minutes. Once we're finished with the last recording, we can power off the board by unplugging the USB cable. 